Knee pain can make even the simplest of movements unbearable and also prevent us from the kind of exercise we want to do. In this video, I'll go through some gentle exercises and ways to modify certain yoga poses that will both help to protect your knee and help you with healing. Before diving into our exercises, let's talk about the knee just briefly. We have big quad muscles that run all the way down and kind of blend into the patella or the kneecap. And then underneath the kneecap, we have a lot of different ligaments and then under Underneath that, we have the meniscus. Now, the knee is a hinge joint, which means that it mostly moves up and down, so it extends and flexes. It can twist a little bit, but depending on where the rest of our body is in space, if it twists too much and it's bearing a big load of our body, then that's where it can lead to injury or tears, and this is quite common. Most of our joints and our, our legs and our arms have a referral pattern. So for our knees, that would be the hip joint. So the more stable the hip joint and the stronger the muscles around the hip, the more stable the knee joint's going to be. If you could imagine that you had a very weak gluteus medius muscle, if this muscle is weak, it will tend to cause the knee to go inward, and that's creating a bit of a twist, right, through this hinge joint. So some of the things we're going to do together today are going to help build a healthy pattern from the hip to the knee, and then we'll also be taking just a couple classic yoga postures and finding ways we can modify them, but these modifications will also help you strengthen your knee. Now, in addition to this, it would be great if you have knee pain or you have what we call knee valgus, which is essentially where when you're bending down, the knees tend to go inward. And you can test that when you squat or if you do a lunge, the knee tends to go in. What you want to focus on is strengthening your gluteus medius and things like clamshells and fire hydrants and also strengthening your adductors, the inner thigh muscles. These two muscles together, the opposing muscles, work to help stabilize your femur bone, the thigh bone in the hip socket. And remember that stability of the hip socket and the femur bone is going to track all the way down to your knee and help with stability in your knee joint. The first set of exercises commonly known as the big three of knee exercises are really designed to help you track your knee and hip joint and the same line for functional movement like walking. It's also going to help strengthen the uh, muscles and the tendons and the ligaments all around the knee. You will need a rolled up blanket or a cushion for these so grab that and meet me on your back. From a laying down position with feet hips distance apart, knees hips distance apart, we'll keep the right knee bent and just straighten your left leg to start. And we'll flex the foot. And I've got my hands on my hips to help stabilize the hip because we don't want to move it around too much. Remember, we want stability to help with the knee joint. And all you're going to do is drag the left heel back to the starting position and then trace it back and then you'll drag it back and trace it back down and drag it back and trace it back down. Now mine's bumping a little bit because I'm on a yoga mat, which is a little sticky, but if you're on the floor or something, that would be perfect or carpet. Just slide the foot out and pull it back and we'll switch sides. So slide the foot out Foot is flexed and pull it back. Keep the hips nice and stable. Slide, drag the foot out and pull it back. And you wanna do about th uh, 10 reps of these three sets. And we've got three exercises. So this whole thing shouldn't take more than five to 10 minutes out of your day and can greatly help and improve your mobility. 
Okay, let's move on to the second exercise. Again, we'll start with bent knees. For this one, we'll straighten our left leg. And I want you to extend so much through your left knee joint, so that means straighten it, that maybe even your heel would lift off the ground and we'll hold that. And this is working the tibia anterior, the f muscles in the front of the tibia uh, in the front uh, that's connected to the knee. And we'll release. And then we'll do that again. Foot is flexed, extend through the knee, and we're holding. And release, and extend. And release, and extend. And release, and if the heel isn't lifting off the ground, that's okay. Just extending out through the knee joint as much as possible and release. Let's switch sides. So right leg is straight, extend through the knee, perhaps it lifts the heel off the ground, and release. Extend, again, try to keep those hips nice and level. The hips will want to kind of tilt and compensate, especially if the knee is weak. And release, and extend and release. Let's practice our third exercise. For this, a cushion or a rolled up blanket will do. And you'll just start with it under one knee. So I'm putting it under my left knee here, and I'll keep my right leg straight. And similar to the other one though, but now we're working the back of the knee, you're going to press into whatever prop you've got. So press into the prop, so strengthening the back of the knee, you're holding for about five to 10 seconds and then release. And I can tell my hip is lifting off the mat to compensate, which means I'm firing off my glute muscles. So I want to really try to focus on just the back of the knee pressing in. Our big strong muscles like the glutes tend to overpower and take charge and everything. So try to minimize that, just push the back of the knee into the blanket and release, and we'll switch sides. So sliding your prop under the opposite knee. Our left leg is straight, we'll push the back of the knee into the blanket, and release, and again push, and release, and push, and release. So my goal here is to just practice enough with you so you get the three exercises and then on your own you could start incorporating these into your daily routine. Now we'll go over some common yoga poses that you can modify, particularly if you have knee pain, that will relieve the compression in the knee or pressure of the knee and also help to build some strength. So the first thing that we'll do is child's pose is a very common yoga pose and it's our kind of resting pose, but it can cause pain for people with knee pain. So what you'll do is you'll take a rolled up blanket or even a towel You'll place your blanket behind the knee, the round edge all the way behind the knee. And now our big toes can touch, our knees can widen, and we can come into our child's pose. And it's okay if the hips don't go all the way back to the heels, they probably won't be able to with the prop in there. And what we're doing now is creating some space behind the knee to take some of that pressure off in this flexed position. And it's, the prop is also giving the back of your knees some feedback. So hopefully this will relieve some pain and discomfort in your child's pose. And you can roll up as much as needed. Another common complaint for those with knee pain is weight bearing on the knees and poses like tabletop or low lunge. So I would recommend if you're practicing yoga, just having a rolled up blanket here underneath your knees so that as you move through your classes, that blanket is always there to catch the knee underneath you. But let's talk specifically about why it can hurt so bad 
to have your knee bent in something like low lunge, and especially if we were asked to grab the back foot and get a quad stretch or something. So basically what's happening is right now in this position, you are bearing the weight on your kneecap. And the interesting thing about the kneecap is it actually moves and slides. So we can use that to our advantage in this pose. The kneecap does not like to have direct pressure on it and especially the weight of our torso. So let's feel what the kneecap uh, feels like when it's moving. So come into a lunge position. You can rest your hands on your front thigh. And instead of having your hips over your back knee, I want you to lean your hips way forward. And then if you were to move your knee just gently forward and back, forward and back, you might start to feel something sliding. That is your kneecap, okay? So remember, the kneecap doesn't want applied pre direct applied pressure on it. So when we're taking our lunge position, hips go forward. If you slide your knee slightly forward, the kneecap will slide behind you, and that will relieve that direct pressure. That will also make it much more accessible to bend the back leg, whoops, and grab the top of the foot. This way, as we deepen into something like King Arthur, we've got no direct pressure into that kneecap. Next, we're going to look at some of the most common poses in yoga, the warrior poses in the lunge. Grab a block and you'll need some wall space. So if you have a weak gluteus medius or overpowering adductors, what will happen when we bend the knee in a variety of yoga postures is that the knee will turn in. And that we call knee valgus, right? And so uh, it's very common here in things like Warrior Two, Warrior One. And so a really nice way to train and align your knee in proper position and help to stabilize the knee and strengthen it is to get pretty close to a wall and you'll take a block, I like a foam block, and I'm going to take a Warrior One position and you're placing the block just under your knee at your shin bone. And you can take your lunge or warrior position here, and you're gently pressing the block, um, the, your leg rather, into the block. And if you look down at your knee, you'll see that just doing that action aligns the knee into its healthy position. So practicing some of these postures here at the wall using the block will help to train where the knee needs to be positioned as well as strengthen it. And again, it works for uh, many of these positions where the front knee is bent at that 90 degree angle. So we can take our warrior two here. We could even do reverse warrior. We could take side angle, all the while training the knee in the right position. It will also work for a lunge position. Obviously our lunge, we're a little bit less stable because the back sole of the foot is off. So just you have the wall here for stability if needed. And then you can see if you can lift the arms off the wall. I hope these exercises and modifications gave you some helpful ways that you can both strengthen your knee, improve your mobility, and just live a pain-free, more easeful life. I'll see you in the next video.